Is this? Yeah, that's on. OK, um, this is a coffee break, so off you go. And there's a gun. <laughs> Oh, there we go. OK, I'm actually going to do this really quickly because we're behind. And I forgot what I was going to say anyway, so it suits me fine. Um, OK, so I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the privacy and scaling features in Grin. It might have been covered a bit before, but I'm just going to condense it all into one place here. Um, here's an overview. We'll talk about the moving moment. So it's there. I'm going to rush through this now. OK, so um, basically what MimbleWimble is about, you've, you know all about the, the term. You've heard it before. Um, in my opinion, it's kind of it, it's something that builds on top of a lot of things that happened before. So we had the the confidential transactions paper, uh, which gave us a concept of using Peterson commits and uh, range proofs to hide amounts. Um, Mimblewimble on, is essentially one insight on top of that, which is you're just adding. Um, in the original CT paper had um, kind of a sample transaction in it, adding inputs and outputs. But the Mimblewimble insight was you can actually use this to prove ownership with the excess value at the end there. So that's the key kind of tenet of Mimblewimble. Um, <coughs> now, I was, I'm going to very, very quickly now dissect an entire Grin block, which I think demonstrates the, the privacy features better than anything. So um, I'm going to move on to the next one. I meant to go back and forth here. But OK, so can't really see that very well. It's not showing up quite well. But if you look at the, the Grin block in an explorer, all you can see here are outputs, which are basically Peterson commits. Um, they're basically indistinguishable from random data. So down here, you'd have the, the inputs, which are just outputs, basically. It's outputs all the way down here. Um, the transaction kernels um, up there. And again, the, um, since I'm talking about privacy and scalability, I should point out that they're, they're, there's no way to aggregate them. So it's a kind of, that's kind of something that adds to the, the scalability challenge that we might have. Being able to aggregate those would be the holy grail. Um, and then more outputs. Again, sorry, I'm rushing a bit here. So our main privacy features are there's no visible amounts anywhere on the blockchain. Um, transactions are completely aggregated. So transactions from all sources through Dandelion being relayed through nodes end up in one big Franken transaction that ends up on the blockchain, or that ends up kind of the last thing to go into the blockchain. Um, there's no initial block download. So you don't need to keep blocks around. When you sync a new node, you just get as many blocks as you need to, to meet a horizon. Um, no identifying information whatsoever in the chain. And it's very hard, not impossible, but very hard to link inputs to their corresponding outputs. Um, so other privacy features that we have. Um, within the wallet itself, by default, they generate something called switch commitments, which um, gives us some, some options if there's a quantum mageddon happens at some point. Um, we use Dandelion to obscure the transaction. We've talked about that a lot already. Um, zero confirmation cut-throughs, whereas if you have, say you have a uh, transaction A becomes B, or A produces outputs B, and then B produces outputs C. You, you can actually drop, cancel out B in the middle, so you just have A, C, and then B never appears in the blockchain. And transaction aggregation I just talked about a little bit. And then the main challenge that we have in this, um, probably the biggest criticism that we get, is that it, it is possible to reconstruct the trans transaction graph. Not easy, but it, it, still is very, it still is possible to do. Um, if particularly you have additional monitoring, you have someone sending tainted, tainted outputs through there. And we need to be constantly asking ourselves, like, how resistant are our privacy features to really motivated adversaries, three-letter agencies with the hardware, uh, the capability, the will to do this? Um, so, OK, so quickly on scalability. Um, this, is, this is our UTXO set. And you see what's happening here is every once in a while you get a big drop in it. What's actually happening here? Um, outputs are being removed from the, the UTXO set because once they're, they're used up, they're gone. They're no longer needed for validation, which, which is all in the kernel. So all that can be dropped. The block data can be dropped. This allows us to do fast sync, which means the, the time to sync a node um, kind of dependent on download speed should stay more or less constant, no matter how large the blockchain gets. And then cut through, which again is, is theoretical a scaling feature, but how often will it get used in practice? We don't know. And then our other scalability challenges, range proof size. Um, it's much better than it was when we first started with bulletproofs, but not perfect, obviously. And especially because we can't actually aggregate them, so we can't actually use a lot of the, the cool stuff you get in bulletproofs. Um, kernels immutable, you can't, be, you can't aggregate them as we are. Again, we'll probably hear some more about uh, ways we could potentially address that. And then um, there's, a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of pending technology, a lot of promising stuff out there, but it's all theoretical. And sometimes it's great theoretically, but when you try and apply it, there's other issues. And that's it. I'll leave it right there for now. <laughs> OK. And he's gone. 
All right, so we're going to go to coffee break now. Uh, and guys, uh, it's time is now 10.20. We will be back here at 10.30 to get back on time. Coffee break outside. We start again at 10.20.